Hi guys, it's me, Mr. McNichol again. Well, today in this little lecture, I'm going to be talking about your recent homework assignment on Chapter 5. Uh, give you guys some broad strokes, what you needed to do if you're not sure why you didn't get a perfect score, or just things that will help you when you have to write your end of the year exam paper and so forth. Little things for you to refer to. Okay, makes sense? Okay, so I'm going to go through it <clears throat> question by question, and uh, we'll just go from there. You might see me jumping back and forth and looking down at the bottom of the screen just to make sure that I've got everything down here correctly. All right, so question one was describe Gatsby's mood when Nick gets home. Why might he be in this kind of mood? Well, part of the reason he's in that mood, he's agitated. It's late at night. He's waiting outside of Nick's house, so pretty close to it. And he's agitated. He's kind of jumpy. Why? Well, he's been waiting to find out if Nick is going to help him reconnect with Daisy. Gatsby is doing things in kind of a roundabout way. He doesn't want to directly go to Nick and say, help me get back together with your cousin. Instead, when he finds out Jordan knows Daisy, and Daisy knows Nick, and Nick is Daisy's cousin, and Nick lives next door to Gatsby. <clears throat> Gatsby talks to Jordan at his party, tells Jordan his story, and then Jordan goes and tries to get Nick to go talk to Daisy. Okay? Anybody tells me what this sounds like? To me, it's kind of like when I taught middle school for a number of years. Okay? But Gatsby is not not a very sophisticated person. He's very, very leery of doing this kind of stuff on his own. He's worried at some point that Nick might reject him. So he goes to Jordan, who Nick is likely to listen to. Okay, makes sense. Please remember, people's first names start with a capital letter. Apostrophe S for possession of things. Okay? Remember that. Some of you lost points because of that. Now, what does Gatsby offer Nick? This is question two. What does Gatsby offer Nick in their meeting at the beginning of this chapter? And why does he do this? And why does Nick refuse? Well, Gatsby has been in a world of gangsters for a long time. Currency in that world isn't just money, it's favors. You do something for me, and then I'll do something for you. Gatsby is really worried. He's used to being rejected by people from Nick's world. Nick lives in a world with the rich people. Okay? And so Gatsby says to Nick, you know, if you want, I could give you a little side business to make some money. Well, Nick immediately knows what that means. He's met Meyer Wolfsheim, who is a gangster. He's a brutal man. He has human molars for his cufflinks. Okay? He is a very influential gangster. He fixed the World Series. Okay? And when you start dealing with folks like that, Nick knows it's very hard to get yourself away from them. Nick says no. He's polite. He says, I'm too busy. But the real reason is he doesn't want anything to do with the gangsters that Gatsby is dealing with. Okay? Nick is also kind of offended, you could argue, because Nick is willing to do this just out of friendship. Okay? Gatsby doesn't understand that. In Gatsby's experience, people have price tags. And so Nick is unique among the people that Gatsby has dealt with, whether they be rich people or uh, gangster people. Okay? So that's why Nick refuses, both because he wants to do it for friendship and plus he doesn't want anything to do with the kinds of people that he knows Gatsby deals with. Okay? So what does Nick agree to do for Gatsby? That's question number three. It's pretty straightforward. Nick agrees. And if you read the text, this is very simple, but it's very important. Nick agrees to ask his cousin Daisy over for tea. And while they're drinking tea and talking, Gatsby is going to accidentally, on purpose, walk in and knock on the door and visit Nick and then bump into Daisy. Now think about this again. Does this sound like middle school or not? It does, kind of. Okay. I'm going to accidentally, you set up here and we'll arrange this whole thing. But remember, 
Gatsby, while he knows how to make money and he knows how to deal with gangsters, okay, he doesn't really know a lot about how to relate to regular people, okay, including people who are from Nick's station in life. Okay? So that's what Nick agrees to do for Gatsby. He agrees to help, and he knows. This is the odd thing about Nick. He says to Daisy, don't tell Tom. And Daisy says, who's Tom? Okay. What? That's question number four. Why does he tell her not to bring Tom? You know, this shows that Nick may not be the nicest sort of person in the universe because he knows that Gatsby wants to rekindle a romance with Daisy. And he knows that if you bring your husband to something like that, in Daisy's case, that's going to put a real kink in the works. But he does it anyway. Okay? He still says, don't bring Tom. He wants this whole plan to go off without a hitch. Daisy doesn't realize that Gatsby's going to be there, but remember, there are ways in which she doesn't like Tom very much. She's angry with him. Okay? She undercuts him sometimes. Oh, he's reading books with lots of big words, right? She is doing all these kinds of things. And so she says, who's Tom? In other words, no, I won't bring him. I know he wouldn't be a lot of fun at our gathering. Okay? So, there's that going on as well. Um, so... Time, question number five, time is an important symbol in the chapter. Give me two times that time is mentioned or referred to. A number of people mentioned very specific times. Be here at this point on the clock. The meeting ended at this point on the clock. I was looking more, not just for that, like be here at this particular time. Okay. I was also looking at uh, ways in which time is referred to indirectly. For example, and this is, a, this is an important scene in the movie, while Gatsby is talking, he's fumbling. He's really awkward when he actually walks in. He's terrified. This is his girl that he loved five years ago. He's built this moment up for years and years. And he comes in and he's awkward and it's not working. And she's awkward. It's not working for her either. Okay. When is time mentioned? Well, when Daisy says, we used to know each other, we haven't seen each other for a while, he cuts right in. Five years this November. He's been counting the years and the months. So that's one place time is mentioned. I still gave you credit if you mentioned, you know, the o'clock. I think that's fair. But also, right after that, when he tries to talk to her, he accidentally knocks Nick's clock off the mantelpiece. Okay. He's trying to rewind time, and instead he's breaking it. He's messing it up. Okay. Well, he tries to break the whole thing off. He tries to tell Nick, this was a mistake. I've got to go. But Nick says, you know what? She's just as scared as you are right now, in so many words. Gatsby's surprised, because in his mind, Daisy is perfect. How could she possibly be scared or feel awkward about this? Well, she is. That breaks the ice. Nick leaves for an hour. Okay, Daisy told her driver to drive for an hour. He's gone. And uh, when Nick goes out, okay, well, we're going to talk about this. Number six, why might uh, the author Fitzgerald have made time such an important symbol in this chapter? All kinds of reasons. This is a what would you think. Some people noted Time is something you can't get back. When you spend it, it's gone. Okay? Fitzgerald was 29 when he wrote this book. His 20s, the time that a lot of people use for fun, were just about gone. So he might have felt like his time was slipping away. Okay? Uh, he had been married for a number of years. Okay? That time had been happy, but his wife had a series of mental illness problems. Today, we could have treated them. Back then, it wasn't so easy. So he might have felt like really sad that those happy times were going away. If you People have looked at letters he wrote to friends and things like that to get this idea. Okay? But in Fitzgerald's works, you see a lot of time symbolism. People trying to get back to a happier time in their lives. 
okay? So it could be a whole bunch of things. I accepted a whole bunch of ideas for that, okay? Number seven, it's raining heavily when Daisy comes over. When does it stop? And why might this be important? Um, there were some people who had some pretty good ideas. I only had two or three people who were just bang on the money with this. Do they still say that? Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, uh, why is it raining? Again, for Fitzgerald, water is a symbol that he uses a lot in his books. And he uses it more in The Great Gatsby than just about any place else. For Fitzgerald, sorry if this thing is shaking, I'm just shifting my you know, comfortable spot here. For Fitzgerald, okay, money is uh, time rather. No, water. Let's go back to water. Sorry about that. Water is important, okay? There are many images that Fitzgerald uses where characters are trying like crazy. Maybe they're trying to make just enough money to survive. Maybe they're trying to keep their relationships together. But he uses metaphors and words that have to do with water. Oh, I'm treading water right now. I'm just barely keeping my head above water with my finances. Well, water for in The Great Gatsby is used, for example, to separate Gatsby from Daisy. They are separated by water. And Gatsby reaches out, remember, every night he's reaching out, trying to get that green light. Green symbolizes what? Life. He wants that life with Daisy, the life that Daisy has. And the water keeps him from getting it. His swimming pool, another example. Okay. His swimming pool, remember, he never swims in the, his own pool. They mention that several times. He never swims in the pool. When all of his guests come by and they're all jumping in and out of his pool, he never gets into it. Water symbolizes that thing that separates him from the life he wants with the rich and the powerful and the famous and the beautiful people. Okay. Well, that rain is coming down. Okay. Rain can be life-giving, but it can also be depressing, okay? And so when Gatsby is scared and he's nervous and that rain is coming down, that's when he meets Daisy. And when he first talks to Daisy, just waving to one of my uh, people in the house here, um, when he sees Daisy, okay, he ends up, the rain lessens, and then Nick goes out for an hour, and suddenly the sun comes out. And when he gets back, Daisy and Gatsby are talking and laughing. The rain, the weather, it basically shows Gatsby's mood. There's a break between them while it's raining. But once that break is gone, the sun comes out. Okay, so water symbolizes separation. Okay, at Gatsby's parties, he steps back from everybody and watches while they're all playing in his pool. Okay, and you'll see the one time he, we do see him use his pool, we'll get to that later on. Okay, but that's why water is a symbol that's used a lot, almost as much as time. <clears throat> now describe three things about Gatsby's house that he shows to Daisy. A lot of people came up with some great descriptions here. Um, there was a great big G on the floor that was meant that uh, was mentioned. There's a fellow who's playing organs, all of the various decorations and things like that. The big thing that Gatsby gives to Daisy, though, at one point, okay, he starts, this is question nine, what does Daisy end up doing when she sees the many, many shirts of Gatsby? Why might she do this? People have speculated about this back and forth. Why would she start crying when Gatsby shows her all these beautiful shirts that he's bought? Okay. What most people agree upon is this. Daisy has a husband who can give her many things. But he doesn't have to expend any effort to make that happen. And it, he can say he loves her, but what kind of a husband is Tom? He cheats on her. He doesn't pay attention to her the way he ought to, many would say. Okay, he's a jerk. When Gatsby gives all these shirts 
to Daisy. And note the colors of the shirts. This one is blue, and this one is white, and this one is, you know, white stripes. All those symbols that we talked about earlier, okay? Purity, possibility, wealth. He's tossing all of these colored shirts to her. Now, for Daisy, it kicks in. Daisy has had, Daisy's not really a dumb woman the way she pretends to be. She's actually very, very smart. Okay? But she's had to hide that because remember what she says in her world that she's grown up in, the only good thing a woman can be is a beautiful fool. She says that at the beginning. So, what about the shirts? Who cares about the shirts, Mr. McNichol? Here's why. Daisy begins to cry. Most people agree because she realizes this guy really loved me. He really, really loved me. Okay. On the day, but and as soon as he left for war, she has this whirlwind courtship with a rich boy, and she agrees to marry him. The letter she gets that day, I think I mentioned in my earlier bit, she gets a letter which we presume is from Gatsby, and she realizes she's messed up her life in that sense. She's going to marry a guy who doesn't really love her the way Gatsby does, and she crushes the letter just like she's crushing her dreams of marrying someone who really loves her. When she sees all the shirts, she realizes the shirts, the house, the beach that he has, his boat, his really gaudy yellow car, all these things he has gotten, all that he's done to climb up from being poor, it's all been done for her. Now, some women might be creeped out by this. In Daisy's case, because she is so starved for love, she realizes this guy really loves me. And that triggers a really, really powerful emotion. So much, she starts crying. But again, in her world, you don't make yourself really vulnerable to people. Maybe she does later with Gatsby, we don't know. But at that moment, she can't even say what's really making her cry. She just says, I've never seen so many beautiful shirts before. Okay? She can't say what it is. But we as the audience, we can kind of figure out this is why she's crying. Okay? Because she realizes maybe she doesn't love Gatsby, but she knows that someone, someone loves her. Okay? So, that's the questions from that particular chapter, chapter five. And uh, later on, we'll do the ones for chapter six. I hope you guys got something out of this. Thanks a whole lot. And I'll see you guys later on. Bye-bye.